Um, so the show is called I Didn't Have Cable because both Anita and I grew up without cable. So we watch all the most basic shows. Like, have you ever heard of a show called VIP? Exactly, because you all had cable. That's what happens. Do you guys watch reruns of Mr. Belvedere on Saturdays? Exactly. <laughs> Because you all had cable. All that, didn't even know what it was. I was all not into it. Um, <laughs> lots of fun. Um, so this is uh, actually my best worst dating story that's ever happened. And I need to give you guys some context because this happened uh, about 10 years ago. I was in my early 20s back then. So if you hear anything stupid, understand I was in my early 20s, okay? I was, I was making a lot of mistakes back then, you know? Like, I thought dog walking was a career. Do you know what I mean? Like, I wasn't in my right mind. So things were happening. So I was in my early 20s. Um, I was actually just starting to do comedy. And this was the, the first time I was actually, like, seriously dating as an adult. And um, this is actually a very queer-friendly show. I don't know if this is going to be, like, I don't know, super, like, hetero after this. I don't know why hetero meant fisting, but whatever. Um, <laughs> I said that's what you guys do, right? Yeah, punching Vikings! I don't know. Um... <laughs> What Z's. So, uh, this is very not hetero. So uh, I was I was a senior comedian. Um, let's call him Dave, because his real name was Mike. And um, Dave Mike was a guy who I, I was. We were seeing each other. It was okay, um, but he was like a, a shitty boyfriend in a lot of ways. And we at one point he broke up with me, and I was like, you know what? That's cool. All right, we're done. And then he was like, oh, I feel bad, I made a mistake. Uh, and then he was like, I'll take, let me, can I have another chance? And I took him back, and then he broke up with me again. So I was already on the warpath. And here's the thing, is that like, he broke up with me again, but before that, like, we were having sex. And here's the thing, he wore, he wore a t-shirt during sex. Which, what? yeah, exactly. Which, free the nipple, do you know what I mean? Hashtag free the nipple, it's fine. <laughs> Bothered me. Strike one. Strike two, it was a Simpsons t-shirt. And I love the Simpsons. <laughs> you can't be staring at yellow people while having sex. It's really awkward. It's nasty, okay? And strike three, it was a Simpsons t-shirt. It was Ralph Wiggum, and it was me fail English. That's impossible. That was the last thing I saw having sex. And I was like, this will not stand. So, I was, so we broke up with me again, and I was like, what I'm gonna do for revenge is I'm gonna find a guy and who I'm gonna have sex with that guy and then that way it'll clear the slate. And like, <laughs> you know, I wasn't gonna tell him but I felt like he will know, do you know what I mean? Like, you know sometimes like if, like if you have an injury and your bone hurts, you're like, oh, rain is coming, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I felt like I would have sex with this new guy and he'd be like, ooh, my ears are twitching, ooh, Calvin found new dick, all right, I guess that's good for him. I assume that's how that worked. Again, early 20s, I was dog walking. I didn't know. <laughs> you're touching shit a lot, so you're gonna meet a lot of shit. So, so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna find a guy. I need to find a guy who like, is both pleasant, but in, like, you know, safe to have sex with. And um, you know, I looked for a guy the old fashioned way, Craigslist, and um, <laughs> it's Craig, he knows a lot of shit. So, <laughs> so I went on Craigslist, and uh, I, was, I, I was screening, you know, I was like looking for things like, you know, don't own a knife, great. Like, you know, and I was like trying to prioritize what I was looking for. And then I found a guy um, and he seemed very like nice, super pleasant. Uh, we had like, you know, several email exchanges and we exchanged pictures, like face pictures, not just like downstairs business. Um, <laughs> again, classy, I'm sorry you're turning her away. Um, <laughs> So I, we exchanged pictures, we talked for a while. I you know, asked him like, what he did for a living. He said he was a chef, which I was like, that's great and that's wonderful. And then this is what I always do whenever I date anyone online. Like, while I, I always ask, like, are you a serial killer? <laughs> because the answer to that will tell you a lot about that person. <laughs> like, because sometimes people answer very incorrectly. <laughs> You would be very surprised. You would think that there would be only one answer, which is no, but there is not. <laughs> there are several answers. Some of them are wrong. <laughs> this guy was fine. He was like, oh, I only murder Cheerios, which I was like, that's cute. You're a dad, fine. So, not married. He was single. I just want to make that clear. I was like, I make sure that there's no wedding ring on. His, his picture didn't have a band in it, so I was like, it's okay. 
So I was like, we're gonna meet in public. Uh, we met, so we, but the only thing he said was before, he's like, just so you know, I just have a thing in my past, so I just want you to know that. <laughs> Which is ominous, and I wish that there was something more, uh, sp like, you know, specific than thing. But I was like, okay, a thing. We all have things in our past, you know, whatever. I pissed myself at McDonald's once. Like, I get it, we all have things that <laughs> happen to us. But I was like, we're gonna meet in public. So we go to this bar in Union Square, and uh, I go and meet with him. He looks, he looks attractive, he looks decent, he looks chef-y, I guess. Um, I don't know how chefs look. A chop Chef wasn't a thing yet, so I didn't know and I didn't have cable. Um, so I meet with this guy. Everything seems nice, he seems like, you know, cool, hunky-dory. He's like, hey, do you want a beer? And I said, yeah, sure. So he buys his two beers, and then he like finishes the first beer within a minute. Just like chugs it and slams it, like it's a game of flip cup. And I was like, whoa, this is fast. And he's like, hey, do you want another beer? And I said, well, I'm still working on this one. And he's like, I'm gonna get us two more beers. And I said, okay, fine, I guess this is what we're doing now. So he gets us the second beer. He finishes that second beer within like five minutes, and I still have two beers on the table. And I was like, I should hurry up, because this is gonna get weird. And so we're talking, but things still seem normal. They seem fine. And then, he, and then I asked him, I was like, hey, so you mentioned this thing in your past. What is this thing? <laughs> in your past. And he goes, well, I was in jail for something. <laughs> and, you know, I don't want to be rude, you know? Because, like, I'm a liberal. Like, I went to Wesleyan. Like, I don't know. <laughs> it might have been on some bullshit. Do you know what I mean? Like, was it some bullshit or was it not some bullshit is what I asked. And he was like, well, okay, it was a thing. Like, it was like, it was a misunderstanding. And I was like, okay, what do you mean by misunderstanding? Like, and what kind of jail are we talking about? <laughs> also important. Like, you know, because I've seen Oz. And I was like, is it like Oz jail or is it like Monopoly jail? Like, did you roll too many doubles? Like, what was happening? And he was like, well, okay, so I was on, I went to jail because like, there was a thing with someone underage. That's literally what he said, and he used air quotes. For the record, never use air quotes with underage, because it makes it sound worse. Way worse. And he kept, it was a misunderstanding, because I didn't know, he didn't tell me he was underage. I kept using this. He didn't tell me he was underage, and my only reaction was to go, oh, but I'm 24! Like, I don't know why. I was like, because I get, I look really young, and then I didn't want him to be like, is this a sting? Is like Chris Hansen gonna jump out? And I was like, no, I'm 24, it's fine. And then for some stupid reason, I just kept the, the date going. I kept it going and did not walk away after he said that. And it was like a real, like, it was one of the things where like, it was like a strike one kind of thing, but I was like, well, you know, it was a, it was a quotation, use air quotes, so it's fine. <laughs> Like, I'm sure maybe he had a fake ID from Pennsylvania like we all did, you know, whatever. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know his life. So we keep having the date, things continue, and the, you know, we work past it, we talk about The Economist and things like that, and it was fine. And he was like, hey, you know, would you wanna come back to my place? And I said, you know what, yeah, I think that this is fine, we're gonna do it. You're right, it was a bad idea. Um, <laughs> Cause I needed revenge, I needed to win you guys. I needed to win, I need to like, you know, get this new dick to like clear the palate and it could be like connect four and I'd be great. So I agreed to go back to his place. And he's like, hey, by the way, just so you know, I live in Bensonhurst in Brooklyn. I don't know if you guys know where Bensonhurst is. Okay. Two people have a two hour ride home. So deep in, and he's not even like close to the train. He's like, we have to take an express bus to my place which is strike two, and I really should have said no, but he said the magic words, which is, I'll pay for it. So I was like, whew, thank goodness. Uh, so now I'm on an express bus. I'm on a 60-person limo, basically, going to this man's house in Bensonhurst. And we're like sitting in the back of the bus, like two horny teenagers, just like talking and giggling and like kind of like rubbing crotches. And, the mood lighting was great, so I felt like it was just the time to do that. And like we're there, we're talking, and we're still talking, and like it's a pretty decent conversation. And you know, like I'm like talking about like my hopes and dreams, and he's talking about his hopes and dreams, which I assume means, you know, no parole. And like <laughs> it was 
great. We finally get to his place after we get off the bus, and it's still another like five minute walk to get to his place. And then we get to his place, and he's like, hey, like my place is a little messy. <laughs> so here's the thing. I go upstairs, and we get into his place, and he is a straight up a hoarder, like a hoarder. <laughs> Like, there's, like, cardboard boxes everywhere and newspapers everywhere. And it's, like, one of those situations where, like, I kept hearing a cat, but I never saw a cat. <laughs> like, at all. <laughs> like, I, we would, as we'd walk through, I'd be talking, and I'd hear a meow, just a stray meow. And I'm like, is this an alleyway that we're going to fuck in? Like, what is happening? This is crazy banana pants weird. But again, I'm still like, well, you know, like maybe he just had a lot of stuff and he didn't get to like clean up yet since he left jail. Like I kept making excuses. <laughs> and I wasn't thinking like, this could be like an episode of like male snaps. Like I didn't think that. I was like, yes, this is fun, it'll be fun. So we get to his bed, his bed is clean. And you know, I was like, the bed's clean. Just take this win, it'll be fine. <laughs> so we go, we have sex and it's very good sex. Okay, like seriously. All of you should sleep with the next convict once in your lives because they appreciate the shit out of sex. Like, he was into it. And I mean, part of it was me. But like, I felt like he was really doing the heavy lifting, so to speak. Um, so we go, we finish, the sex was great. And now like, I'm just laying there and I'm like, okay, I have to figure out a way to leave. And he's like, well, you must be really tired since you know, it was really strenuous work. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. Mean, you know, I, I skipped, you know, going to Blink Fitness. And so he was like, well, hey, how about this? I'm a chef. Do you want some soup? And I was like, what? He's like, do you want some soup? And I said, Are, is okay. And so he leaves and he gets me a bowl of soup, like tomato soup. And it's already awkward enough to like have sex with someone where there's already been all this stuff established. But now I'm like sitting naked in this guy's bed eating soup. <laughs> Like, it's minute 45 of some weird gay indie movie. Like, <laughs> not sure what's happening. Are we gonna talk about gay rights? Like, what's going on? And I still remember this, I'm like sitting cross-legged eating soup and he's like, oh, please don't spill on the sheets, which I'm like, every fucking other thing is dirty here. Really? You can wash sheets. And so he's like, no, but use this pillow. And he just takes out some random pillow. And I'm sitting like cross-legged on a, Pillow, soup on the pillow, eating soup. And I'm like, okay, this got really weird, and this is not where my life should be. <laughs> I don't want Dave Mike to have his ear twitch and be like, oh God, is this what Calvin's doing now? Damn, I should take him back a third time. And so I'm sitting there eating soup, and he's like, he's like, oh yeah, because I had mentioned I was, a com I was doing comedy. He's like, oh, you do stand up. Oh my God, do you know who Donald Glover is? Which I was like, no, because not all black comedians know each other. That's not how that works. <laughs> and then he goes, did you know that Donald Glover is Danny Glover's son? And I was like, that's not true. And now I really have to leave because <laughs> this is getting worse. And then he goes, you know what my favorite comedy is? Do you know what my favorite comedy is? The Big Bang Theory. And I was like, it's time to go. <laughs> I'm not going to sit through Bazinga while eating soup. That's not a thing I'm going to do. So I'm just like, you know what, no. And so I delicately put the pillow of soup down <laughs> on a corner of his bed. And I said, it's time for me to go, but thank you so much. And he's like, I know you're really far away, so like, do you need cab money? And I was like, no, 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 I'll be fine. And then he like goes over to his wallet and he pulls out $50. And he's like, do you, you, do you, if you need, here's $50. And so me being the poor 20 something I am, I was like, $50? <laughs> <laughs> Like, I clutched my pearls, guys. <laughs> and so I literally was like, oh, well, thank you so much. He's like, do you want to call the cab? And I was like, I'll call the cab from downstairs. I'll call it from downstairs. <laughs> I pocketed the $50. I walked downstairs. <laughs> I took out my phone and found where the nearest train was. I walked like half a mile to the train and pocketed that $50, you guys. Pocket, because that was tax-free money, OK? It was tax-free money. <laughs> And I went home, I never called that guy again. But I will tell you this, sometimes a bad date can lead to good tax-free money. So you never know, guys, you never know. Thank you very much. <laughs>